Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is Associative Mapping. This is one of the mapping technique of cache memory. In this video, I'll be telling you what is the concept behind the associative mapping and with the help of an example, I will explain you how can you identify whether there is a cache hit or cache miss. Let us begin. First, what is cache? Cache memory is a very high speed memory and cache memory is used actually to balance whatever there is a mismatch between the speed in between main memory and CPU. So the mismatch in between the speed of main memory and CPU that is being overcome with the help of the cache memory. And the cost of cache memory, this is higher than the main memory, but it is economical than the CPU register. Now, let us talk about the memory mapping. Memory mapping, this is a technique via which the contents from main memory that is being copied into the cache memory. The contents are copied only into the cache memory. That is what the memory mapping technique. So cache memory mapping, you are aware with and there are various kinds of techniques, basically three techniques, direct mapping, associative mapping and set associative mapping. In detail, I have told you in the previous video, but in this particular video, I shall be talking about the associative mapping. What is associative mapping? Associative mapping, this is the fastest mapping technique. Right? So the fastest and most flexible cache organization that always uses associative memory. What happened? As we have discussed in the case of the direct mapping there, though that was the simplest technique, but in that particular case, each block of main memory can map only to one possible cache line. That is what the drawback of the direct mapping but in the case of the associative mapping there is a flexibility that the block of main memory can be mapped to any of the freely available cache line whichever the line is available on that particular cache line the main memory block can be copied that is why this is very flexible in comparison to the direct mapping and it is also very easy to implement as you can see in this particular diagram here you can see there is a CPU address that is of 15 bits. There is an argument register. This is actually the associative mapping cache. Right. So as you can observe in this particular case the associative memory that stores both address and data content of memory work and as you can see here CPU address that is of 15 bits. 15 bits if you convert right whatever you can see in this particular diagram here the numbers have been written in the octal. So when you are converting this number given number into the octal and when we are talking about the address which is of 15 bits means in octal that will be a combination of 5 right. And when you are talking about data, since data that is of 12 bits means here you can see it is converted into the octal, the combination is of 4, right. So I hope you must be remembering how to convert a given number into the octal or hexadecimal. So you must remember here it is in the octal form. What happened when CPU address that is of 15 bits as I have shown in this particular diagram, when it is placed in the argument register? Now, associative memory that used to search for the matching address. Here the address is being matched. So what happened if the address is found, then the corresponding 12-bit data is read and sent to the CPU. Suppose the address which is being uh, searched by the associative memory, if that particular address is this 0277. So if this address matches, then the corresponding this 12 bit data which is 6710 this is in the octal then this particular data is read and sent to the CPU. 
if this particular address matches then this particular data will be sent so this is the condition when address has been found out and that particular address that particular data related to uh, corresponding address will be read and sent to the cpu but if there is no matching of the address it means the corresponding data is not available in the cache memory then main memory is accessed for that particular one so that is the condition of cache miss so this is one particular condition where you can understand the cache hit and cache miss now there might be a condition when all the cache lines are filled all the cache lines are filled means when there is no empty space in the cache if there are suppose eight lines in the cache and all the eight lines are occupied filled now new content will be placed at some particular location means now at that particular time new content content is going to replace the earlier one it means there is a requirement of replacement algorithm right it means a replacement algorithm is required whenever there is a requirement to replace the block in case the cache is full this is the condition only and what about the replacement algorithm there are various replacement algorithms but some of the commonly used algorithms least recently used least recently you suppose there are eight cache lines and out of those eight uh, five six lines are commonly used so remaining two lines or the line which having which is having the least prob probability of being used that is going to be replaced second is first in first out out of those eight cache lines the line which is being filled first that is going to be replaced that is what the first in first out next one is least frequently used least frequently used as i have given you the example in case there are eight cache lines and out of eight cache lines seven are being used right but one is never used or very less used so that one which is least frequently used that is going to be replaced and the last one is random replacement random replacement means any one of the line that can could be replaced with the new content so in this particular case in the case of the random replacement the execution is relatively lower in comparison to the least recently used or first in first out or least frequently used so these are the four kinds of algorithms which have been used when there is a cache full now let us understand as i have told you that before starting this video i'll be give, taking one example and with the help of that example i will help you out how to verify the address what kind of physical address is actually so here you can see a cache mapping organization in associative mode is being shown you can see in the case of the cache memory there are 32 words 8 lines in the case of main memory there are 16 blocks and 64 words each and every block consists of four words right so you can see in this particular diagram main memory mapping this content from first block that is being mapped in cache line number one content from block number eight that is matched with or that is copied with the in the cache line number two right so this is how you can see there is no like algorithm or like procedure as we have done in the case of the direct mapping you have to identify which block is going to map in which particular line whichever line in cache memory is free that particular line can have the data from the main memory block if you have to understand about the physical address you can see the division of physical address here there are two fields only tag and block or line offset tag is what the complete block number right so you must remember here are only two things there is no any particular mechanism that which line is going to be mapped any line whichever is free that is why here you can see in the case of the physical address line number is not being mentioned so in this particular diagram you can observe how many total words are there 64 64 is what 2 raised to the power 6 it means total physical address that is of 6 bits 
Block size is what? 4. 4 is what? 2 raised to the power 2. It means block offset that is of 2 bits. Right? Total blocks that is what? 16. 16 is what? 2 raised to the power 4. It means the complete block number that would be of 4 bits. So, in this case, you can see as I have told you that total physical address that is of 6 bits, block offset 2 bits and tag which is the complete block that is of 4 bits, right? So, as in this particular example, you can see as and I have already told you that cache line number 1, right? That have the data which is 4567 being mentioned over here. Cache line number 2. Right? That has the data 32, 33, these four words which is being mentioned over here. So, you can see the tag is what? 1 corresponding to its 0001 corresponding to 2 its tag will be what? 0010 that is what the tag and that must be of 4 bits as I have already told you. So, you must remember that only tag matching is to be done in the case of the associative mapping. And since each and every line holds four words, so this is what? This is the zeroth word. This is first word. This is second word. This is third word. You can write it in the binary. This is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Now let us take an example. Suppose the physical address is this. Let us take this is the only case example means cache has only two lines. For example, right? So, what is going to be done? First, you need to match this tag with the available cache content. So, just search with line number 1 and line number 2. In line number 1, you can see tag matches, right? Then, this is what the block number 01. It means block number 01 means this word or this data is to be copied and taken by the CPU. Since tag matches, so this is the condition of hit, cash hit. One more example. Suppose the physical address is this. We have taken the example in this only where two cash lines are available just for the simplicity. So here what is the tag or complete block number? That is what 0000. See there are two cash lines so tag doesn't match. When tag doesn't match it means this is the condition of cash miss. So, this is how with the help of an example you can explain or even if you are getting any numerical question you would be able to explain. Thank you so much for watching this video.